So Colorado has a massive matchup coming up against Baylor at Folsom Field. And today we're going to talk about that matchup. Plus, we'll also get into uh, something that Deion Sanders said about Travis Hunter, specifically about when he gets into the NFL. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but let's get right into this matchup. You know, Colorado going up against Nebraska was a, a game that I felt like Colorado could win, but in the first half, Colorado did not play their style of football. To me, Colorado lost that game against Nebraska in that first half because in the second half, some adjustments were made and they looked a lot better. And those adjustments carried into the essential third game of the season against Colorado State. And Colorado put a really, really good game plan together. They went into that Colorado State game and they won in a dominant fashion, right? Essentially, the offensive line did their thing. Freshman running back Michael Wells came out of nowhere. Uh, not saying that this guy, you know, we we didn't think he could be a good running back, but the guy came out of essentially nowhere, right? He got he got the not start, but he got a lot more carries because of the high ankle sprain injury to the other running back. And uh, Welch came in and had a really really good day. And what's interesting about Welch coming in and kind of doing his thing is the offensive line was also able to open up some lanes. Now, there was a key adjustment made on that offensive line that we'll kind of talk about. But essentially, Colorado did their thing. They're able to run the football. They're able to play a conservative style of offense on the offensive side. And to me, that allowed them to ultimately win that game, right? I think Colorado's defense also did a really good job. And talking about the Colorado defense, you know, against Baylor, Colorado has a huge advantage against Baylor that I don't think some people are, are, are recognizing. And that is that Baylor has a a quarterback injury, essentially, to their starting quarterback in Daquan Finn. Finn ended up hurting his shoulder two weeks ago, and he did not play against Air Force, and they saw their backup quarterback, Sawyer Robertson, come in. Robertson was okay against Air Force. Uh, he did have a rushing touchdown. But through the air, you know, he was he was kind of average, you know, watching the tape. He really didn't push the ball downfield. And uh, really, Baylor won that game last week against Air Force, not because of their quarterback, but because they were able to run the football. I think for Colorado, that's a huge plus because for Colorado, you know, you have some good secondary players and guys like Travis Hunter, a Carter Stout, uh, Stoutmeyer looked pretty good this past week as well, filling in for Shallow Sanders. Uh, you got DJ McKinney, who looks really, really, really good as well. And to me, you know, Colorado has a good secondary and Baylor doesn't have a good passing attack, right? Or at least they haven't proven it to me. So what that means is Baylor's going to try to run the football. And for Colorado, you got some key players in the secondary that you could potentially play a cover one or cover three look, which means you can stack the box, you know, put eight, nine defenders in the box. And you can focus on the run game because there is, you know, there is a potential that Baylor's run game does get going against Colorado. And if that happens, that could be a very, very bad sign for Colorado. Uh, Baylor has three separate running backs that can all hit you for big gains. Uh, Baylor has a good run game. Uh, I think their run game coordinator has done a really, really good job over the past two years. And I think that's carrying into this year. And again, Baylor has three different running backs that can kind of come in and have success. Uh, so one of the things Colorado is going to have to focus on is they're going to have to focus on stopping the run uh, against Nebraska and even NDSU. I didn't feel like it was it was absolutely terrible stopping the run. Uh, they did give up a couple of big plays, but they had a lot of good plays as well. Right. Like. The defensive line was getting in the backfield. They're blowing things up. They're able to make plays. Uh, but then, you know, every four or five plays, they'd give up a, a big run, right, or a big chunk play. And against Colorado State, that didn't really happen, right? Against Colorado State, I felt like Colorado did a lot better job defending the run, and they dominated the trenches as well. And I think against Baylor, that's going to be one of the keys to this game. Colorado's going to have to dominate the trenches. Now, Colorado does have better individual football players than does does Baylor in the trenches now Baylor has I think one or two guys that are pretty solid but generally speaking Colorado should be able to control the the trenches and I think that's kind of where it's going to start plus another thing to keep in mind is Baylor's had like seven eight fumbles over the first three weeks on the offensive side so Baylor is one of those teams that you know they're going to run the football they're going to try to do things through the air seven fumbles a lot of fumbles right so uh to me, one of the things that Colorado can do is potentially capitalize on, on some of those fumbles. Uh, I'm not sure if if uh, Baylor's going to come into this game and try to be more conservative. If they are, that could be another thing that Colorado could potentially take take uh, take control of, especially if you're able to, on the offensive side, put up some points. And let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, Colorado has a phenomenal offense, right? And against Nebraska, it didn't look like that in the first half. 
But in the second half, they did a lot better, right? They were able to drive the ball downfield, had some good possessions. They obviously had to go for it a couple times on fourth down, and they didn't necessarily always get those, 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 uh, you know, those first downs. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately they ended up having to, uh, you know, turn over the ball on downs or whatever. But, uh, I felt like Colorado's offense did a good job. And then more than that, I felt like against Colorado State, they were able to kind of play their style of offense. And I think going up against Baylor, they should be able to continue to push the ball downfield. They should be able to run the football and have success. And I think Michael Welch, you know, you maybe you don't start him, but you definitely got to get him involved and, and give him some opportunities. Welch is a home threat, a, a home threat player on any given play, right? So you got to get the ball in his hands. Uh, also, Cleo Benson was moved to right guard last week. And then uh, Philip Houston obviously went in at right tackle. And those two guys looked a lot better, I felt like, for the right side of the offensive line. I've always felt like the left side for uh, for Colorado has always been solid with Jordan Seaton over there at left tackle. And Seaton's starting to look a lot better as well, right? You can see he's getting more comfortable. Uh, I felt like week one, he looked pretty good. Week two, he's had some struggles. Last week, I felt like he did a really, really good job as well. And I think he'll just continue to get better and better and better as he gets more reps at that left tackle position. And... uh I think the revamped offense line is something that people aren't going to talk about, but it's part of what I think can allow Colorado to have success. Uh, you revamp that offensive line, you, know, you bring in some different players, uh, you move some guys that are inconsistent at times, you, you uh, essentially benched them. I think it's going to allow Colorado to have success, but again, I think Shadir Sanders is going to have to push the ball downfield. Uh, let's see some uh, some deep shots to, J- to Jimmy Horn, right? Let's have this guy run downfield. Let's throw some 40, 50, 60 yard passes to him downfield. It'll open up the offense as well. Uh, I don't remember if there are too many deep shots this past week against Colorado State. I felt like they're a lot more conservative in the approach. There are a lot more, you know, five, six, seven yard passes. And I'm okay with that, right? In fact, that was one of the things I actually said uh, in my preview video talking about the Colorado State game that I wanted to kind of see from Colorado. I put a lot of blame on Pat Shermer, the offensive coordinator. You know, I said that one of the things that he was doing too much of was he's trying to just push the ball downfield nonstop. And he didn't really do that against Colorado State. Or at least I didn't feel like he he essentially did that. And I felt like that is the the, the approach you got to take. But I, this week, I want to see him at least take three or four deep shots, right? I want to see him maybe on the first play of the game, let's just take a deep shot, man. Maybe run Travis Hunter deep, run a Yankee concept, run a Scissors contact, uh, concept, a Jimmy Horn as well as Travis Hunter on the same side and just run some different things, right? And uh, take some deep shots early on to really open up the field. I think the run game will benefit from that as well. Um, another thing that I think is going to be key for Colorado is going to be the different personnel that, that they're using. You know, I talked about this in that same video where I talked about the personnel packages that Colorado was using. It was very, very clear anytime they had a tight end on the field, they ran the ball like 48% of the time. I forget the exact number it was, but it was like a really, really high percentage. When they had a tight end on the field, and then when they did not have a tight end on the field, it was like an 80% uh, chance that they're going to essentially throw the football. Uh, to me, you just got to mix things up. You got to make uh, defenses guessing, right? You can't be so simple on the offensive side that teams can basically know what's coming. Anytime, you know, there was another stat. Anytime Travis Hunter and Jimmy Horn were off the field, they're essentially going to run the ball like, you know, it went up to like 37%, right? And when they were on the field, they essentially ran the ball like 7% of the time, right? It was something ridiculous like that. So it's just cleaning up those little things from the offensive coordinator. Some people also said in that video that, uh, you know, Pat Shermer is essentially running the same offense from last year. So it's not his fault if the offense is not having success. I disagree with that 100%. To me, the offensive coordinator... You know, not only comes into the game with the game script, right? They're going to essentially design the, you maybe it's 15 straight plays, right? Or the first 15 plays. But those 15 plays essentially are going to, are going to show you what's coming this game, right? Or they're going to at least set the tone for this entire game. You run the ball eight of those 15 plays. You're going to let people know we're going to run the football. You throw a deep seven straight times. You're letting people know you're going to throw the ball and to potentially make those adjustments early on in the game that, hey, this team might hit us over the top. Or let's stack the box because they're going to try to run the football, right? So uh, to me, Pat Shermer has just continued to do a good job against uh, Baylor. And uh, don't overlook any of these opponents as well. You know, I know for uh, Colorado, you know, Kansas State's the 13th ranked team right now in the country. And uh, that's essentially in uh, three weeks against Kansas State. They'll have a bye week between UCF and, 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 and that Kansas State game. 
don't overlook the next two games, right? If you're Colorado, don't look forward to any of those future weeks because Baylor is also a football team. UCS, UCF is also another football team. These teams are not here to not beat you, right? And just talking about the conference, you know, at the end of the day, Colorado can make the the playoffs, right? They can essentially get in there if they if they win the uh, Big Twelve, but it's going to come down to winning all of these conference games. Uh, UCF, TCU have already played. UCF obviously beat them. Uh, so UCF right now is uh, one and on the conference. TCU is zero and one, and no other team has played any conference games this season. So uh, it's going to be interesting, man. Very very interesting season. Uh, you also got Utah. On the season, uh, on the schedule as well, a couple weeks after that Kansas State game, um, Oklahoma State at the end of this season as well, right? All ranked opponents, all are going to be big tests for Colorado. Um, but there's no reason why Colorado can't have success this year, right? I know they had that game against Nebraska, but trust me, if Colorado played Nebraska another time, uh, that game I think would end up different, right? I think if Colorado and Nebraska played again, that game would end up completely different. Uh, I think Colorado would come into the ga- that game much more prepared. I think when you go from week one against NDSU, you know, you tell yourself, hey, this game was too close. We want to blow opponents out. We want to push the ball downfield. And uh, it didn't work against Nebraska, right? So you, what happened was you had a lot of three and outs. You had a lot of drives that led to nothing. And then you get down seven to zero, maybe uh, 14 to zero. And now the quarterback feels a little bit of pressure. So when there's a little bit of pressure from the defensive line, he's going to get that ball out because he doesn't want to take the sack. He doesn't want to punt the football. And that leads to even more negative plays, right? We saw Shadir Sanders throw that pick six against Nebraska. But uh, I think Colorado should be able to win this game, right? I, I don't see why they can't win this game. We need to see guys like uh, Dayon Hayes have a really, really good game against Baylor. He, I think, had two sacks last week. A lot of pressures. Uh, Green also had a really good game on the defensive line. I think he had a fumble recovery. I felt like the defense line did a really good job last week. And if they can continue doing that going up against Baylor, this should be a win for Colorado. Let's wrap this video up talking about Deion Sanders and something he kind of said with uh, Travis Hunter. He was asked the question about, can Travis Hunter play both ways in the NFL? And it's an interesting question, right? Because at the end of the day, Travis Hunter is very, very gifted, right? There's not a lot of players, you know, historically speaking, in college that have played both ways. There's very, very minimal players that can play on both sides of football. And we've almost never had a guy that has the impact that Travis Hunter has. Right? Travis Hunter is not even just one of the best wide receivers in the country. He's about one of the best cornerbacks in the country. Right? There's not a lot of players like Travis Hunter. We saw him get that pick against uh, against Colorado State this past week. But uh, Deion Sanders has some interesting words, right? He said, uh, one of the reasons why Deion Sanders feels like Travis Hunter can play both ways is because a lot of teams are tempo in college. So he doesn't get a lot of rest. Just think about this. I just finished talking to scouts about this, about what he can and cannot do. A pros go to the huddle, so he's getting even more time to rest. So most of the teams you play in college, they run some type of tempo or the transition is much greater than pros from snap to snap. So with uh, Hunter getting that amount of rest, he cannot help. But be a great pro. The practices are limited. There's barely any contact. You can't even hit a receiver downfield in the NFL anymore. So uh, Deion Sanders does make a lot of good points here, right? He's essentially saying that uh, I think Travis Hunter can be a two-way player in the NFL because of the fact that in college, you know, teams are tempo, right? There's a lot of hurrying it up, getting down on the ball, quickly snapping the football. Uh, Oftentimes, by the time the ball is set, these teams already have their play calls in. As a team, you're going and it's just, you know, it's just fast paced. You're not getting a lot of rest. On top of that, that goes both ways. Offense does that and defense will have to go up against that because this is college for you. You know, in the NFL, there that, that's not that's not the case, right? Every team pretty much huddles, right? Unless it's a two-minute drill or, or uh, you know, at the end of the game, most teams use like a five-minute drill. If it's the end of the game, you know, it's different, halftime, whatever. But generally speaking, there's a lot of, you know, you huddle up as an offense, you call your play, you go out there. As a defense, you're kind of standing around out there as well. And honestly, if you just look at, like, the the amount of plays that are actually called, it makes sense, right? In college, you're getting so many more plays called every single game than in the NFL. It's literally, like, twice as many plays are essentially being called. And uh, I definitely agree with what Deion Sanders is saying. I don't personally agree with Travis Hunter playing both ways. Uh, I'll tell you guys why here in a second, but Travis Hunter was also asked the same question. 
All right, uh, Colorado uh, star Travis Hunter on what position he wants to play in the NFL. And uh, he had some interesting things to say as well about that. He said, uh, my goal is to continue to be a two-way player. If given the opportunity, I try to continue making an impact on both ends of the field, helping my team wherever they need me most. One of my greatest strengths is my versatility as a player. And I love the challenge of learning and excelling in both roles and pushing my limits. Uh, you know, it's crazy to me because uh, since Deion Sanders in the NFL, you know, we've had one or two guys that have played wide receiver and cornerback, but it wasn't like they're star players. And it's not like they're playing all the time, right? It was just that they sucked at one position, so they kind of got moved to the other. Um, but there's guys that have played on both sides of the football, right, in the NFL. But no one's had an impact since Deion Sanders that Travis Hunter will have in the NFL. Uh, I personally disagree with him playing on, on both sides of the football. Uh, it's the same reason why, you know, your kicker and punter aren't just one player. Right, if your puncher is practicing punting the football 100 percent of the time, he's going to be a lot better of a punter than a guy that's practicing both punt and kick, right? And then kickoffs and those type of things as well, right? It's uh, two different positions at the end of the day. You got to master two positions as opposed to just one. Uh, as a punter, you're only punting the football. You want to, you know, hit those corners. You want to bounce the ball backwards and. You want to punt high, and there's just so many different elements to it, and I think it's the same thing when you think about Travis Hunter. You know, if Travis Hunter only plays cornerback, he's fine-tuning his technique as just a cornerback. If Travis Hunter's playing just wide receiver, he's learning how to set up those stems. He's learning how to set up corners and defensive backs to, to generate separation, and you're going to be a better player at the end of the day if you play just one position. I know uh, Coach Prime played both positions you know, during his time in the NFL, but I think that was also a different time, you know, not, not saying anything negative about coach prime, but, uh, you know, in today's NFL, things are a lot different, right? In today's NFL, you know, the game is faster that I think that's a hundred percent effect. The game, you know, 20, 25 years later is faster, right? Uh, but more than it being faster, it's different because now offenses are doing things differently, right? Uh, on the same, t on the same, you know, on that same note, uh, guys are, are bigger, they're stronger. So if you're a wide receiver in college and you get pressed, well, that cornerback is, you know, he might be bagging groceries, you know, a year later in the NFL, those guys are NFL players, right? So a guy that's going to press you if you're a wide receiver is an NFL corner and he's stronger and he's more physical and it's just more energy, right? That you have to utilize. Plus with Colorado, I think one of the things you can do is, you know, if it's a run play, um, you know, because of the way the hash marks are in, in college, if it's a run play to the opposite side, that corner is never making that play. Well, in the NFL, there's so many different concepts that teams are running that teams have perfected. You you know, if, if Travis Hunter's out there as a wide receiver and you're running outside zone towards the left, the thing is that play might bounce back towards the right or it might bend back inside towards the right and it could come back towards Travis Hunter. As a wide receiver on a run play in college, he might not have to block. In the NFL, you're going to have to block 100%, and you're just, it's just energy at the end of the day, right? Against grown men, essentially, right? Uh, to me, I think the best thing Travis Hunter can do is commit to one position. Not right now, right? I think at this point, if he's able to continue doing it, it makes sense. Um, I would like to see Colorado limit his snaps a little bit more. I think it would be good for, for uh, Travis Hunter to play less snaps because at the end of the day, every single week does matter. But there are some games that are going to matter a little bit more, right? Baylor's not as good as Utah. I think that's just a fact that we can all agree to. They already lost to Utah as well, technically. But like even Oklahoma State, Kansas State, or right, these teams are better than Baylor. So against Baylor, you know, you might not want him to play 100% of snaps. You might limit him for like 60% or maybe certain snaps. And uh, technically, right, to be fair, Pat Shermer was kind of doing that with Travis Hunter, but I think... You know, I was able to see those stats, and I'm sure other teams saw when Travis Hunter was coming off the field, kind of what was happening. So maybe you can't do that too much, but uh, I do think limiting Travis Hunter's snaps, and then as he gets into the NFL specifically, I think he should play wide receiver. Uh, not only do you get paid more as a wide receiver, I think it's an easier position, especially in today's NFL. I think cornerback's a much, much harder position. And I also think Travis Hunter as a receiver is an absolute difference maker. Right. As a cornerback, I think it's a lot harder. We don't know if college translates to the NFL the same way as wide receiver does. Uh, I think he should be a wide receiver. In fact, as a hula scout, I could tell you guys, the people that I've spoken to, Travis Hunter will be asked to play wide receiver. 
based off the talent he has. And he won't be playing both ways, right? I'm confident in saying that. So let me know what you guys think, man. What do you guys think about Baylor? Do you guys think Travis Hunter is a two-way player? Also, I want to know you guys' thoughts on the freshman running back uh, as well as the offense line switch. Do you guys think that actually had an impact or do you guys think it just happened to be Colorado State wasn't that good of a defense? Let me know down in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time with another video.